quick and easy tutorial on uh I didn't, so on the Z06, I actually don't hate the seats. I think they're extremely comfortable. And since I don't track the car and I don't really do, you know, drive, I mean, I drive like that, but it's a good core workout if you don't have seats that hold you in place. So I like the OEM seats, but the foam was flat on the bolsters. So I bought a kit. Uh, I think it was 40, something like 45 bucks each side. So I started with the passenger side and I figured I'd do a quick just point out what you're basically doing here okay check it out easy enough obviously uh, on the passenger side since it's all manual I need to vacuum obviously since it's all manual anyway it's easier because I slid it back removed the two there are plastic clips little plastic clips right here Remove the plastic clips. Then these things come out, which gives you access to the 15 millimeter nuts. So 15, 15, slide the seat forward, 15, 15. Uh, the seat belt itself has a little plug and it's held in with another 15 millimeter bolt. So with five 15 millimeter bolts, you got the seat undone. I disconnected the battery I'm usually kind of hard-headed about that, but I don't want the damn thing exploding on me. So since you're touching yellow airbag stuff, I did that. Pull out the two plastic clips, undo that, undo the main harness from the seat, find a pretty cool pen. I was stuck in the seat track. Um, that's probably a nice one too. Anyway, seat out. So this is the part I was a little confused about. On the back end, on the back end, you will see when you lay it down, put it ass up, and you'll see four, uh, three hog rings on this. So I just cut them. They suggest cutting them. I had bought a hog ring tool, but they say that you're good to go with just cutting them and using zip ties to, to secure it. I guess I'll just do that. Should be good enough. I mean, um, so this is the foam taken off. I had to unclip the seat heater plug. And then these are the strips of foam they include in the kit. So I'm going to try using Super 787, which is what they recommended for foam, to try to rebuild that bolster. That's basically where the passenger would slide in and out. Probably a sizable previous owner because that destroyed. So basically the metal frame of the seat itself ends up cutting into that. So this is the cheap alternative to uh, replacing the seat foam itself. But supposedly, I, heard, I read on the forum, some guy posted a thread that he did this, and he was more than happy with it. So I'll try that route first. So the only other thing you do have to do is, see this little clip? You either push this down or pull it up. In my case, it was upside down, so I actually had to pull it completely out. And then it slides off of its support, off of its uh, shaft. And... Once you do that, you get the three hog rings, do that, unplug the heat seat heater, and then there are two corner hog rings. Uh, under the, on, once you undo the Velcro, you'll see on these little tabs right here, there's one other hog ring. So there will be a total of five. And then here's the string that you'll not cut. You will not cut this. You will um, untie it, and then you can take the seat bottom off. So. Wish me luck. I'm gonna try to glue the stuff in that they say to glue in. Okay, got the Super 77. I sprayed pretty liberally on both sides, let it get a little tacky, and then just stuck it into place. I'm assuming this will provide the metal frame will need to still slide between this, right? So assuming that allows it to kind of sit a little higher up on it so that you don't cut into it as much. Now I need to figure out where that jute pad and the ballistic nylon. The instructions are good, but it seems like it goes for every model, and I don't think every model has the exact same setup. So I need to figure out where the jute pad goes in relation to, you know, like... Maybe because there is a seat heater in mine, it already includes the jute pad. Because I feel like 
the stuff that I saw that people were repairing was the foam directly on these, right? So I wonder if that's how it goes or if you're supposed to add the jupe pad underneath. I know that the ballistic nylon is supposed to go on top, I believe. It's probably supposed to get glued to that to make sure that that foam never sinks onto anything. But with the seat heater, I would be surprised if that can happen. The other thing is I need to figure out where these two little ones go. From what I gather, it looks like they probably sit right in this flat section here. So I'll probably do that next. Yeah, see? Okay, so I did the ballistic nylon underneath. So this prevents from the, uh, the wires from ever cutting into your foam. But realistically, if you have seat heaters, that won't be the case anyway. See? And the seat heater comes with a jupe pad already underneath it. So they had said that some people don't like the feel of the jupe pad because it kind of stiffens things. And to be honest with you, the center cushion part felt good. So I think I'm going to leave well enough alone when it comes to that. Um, so if you have a seat heater, you actually would not use the jupe pad, I believe. I'm going to leave it at that. And that's that. I guess you could see here how it adds the bit of support when you sit on it. The uh, OEM droop pad with the heat, along with the ballistic nylon to make sure that it always sits on top of it. Uh, the only thing I don't know, I don't know about that nylon against the, uh, but I mean, it's it's got to be fine. It's not like it's getting to 200 degrees, and I'm sure the heat passes through that, no problem. Um, on the other side. So you pretty much... Back together, throw the string on, tighten it up, kind of massage the edges. Definitely made it look better. Um, and then massage the edges, do the string, and pull this taut, the thing. And then instead of hog rings, they, you know, you just a couple of zip ties from here to the this just to keep it down. And that's pretty much. I bought a hog ring thing, but I figured. It's not that serious. And then, if you want to see the chair itself, I'll set it down right on my flip flop. Dang it. Okay. Definitely. Uh, I guess the deteriorated foam, I would say, still kind of made its way. Like, it being broken down doesn't give you the same peak, but when you really look at it, even the bolster is different on this side than this side. So, there might just be. It might have started off a little flatter anyway from entry and exit. That might be normal. I, I think I anticipated or expected kind of like exactly the same symmetry on both sides, but I don't think that's the case. And... Oh, oh spectacular. It is... Um, it does feel good, actually. A little extra bit of support, like around, just around the hip area. I have like sciatic sciatic nerve issues and whatnot so it feels good definitely for 90 bucks just buy yourself some time with the oem ones now everybody runs out and gets aftermarket seats but i'm not looking to do that these are so comfortable they really are the headrests everything go on a road trip drove it home from texas fiance and i absolutely love the ride so i ain't changing it yet that's all a mighty good time to uh Throw on the old leather conditioner. Applied by hand, of course. So you can massage it in. You know, for the longest time I would do uh, microfibers and stuff, but the microfiber is obviously more absorbent than the leather as far as like how quickly it'll absorb. So you end up wiping it right off. So I'll massage it in there, give it a good old, good old, uh, good old tugging. It's usually ends up looking pretty good. In addition to that, Pulled out the old, the big, big girl, the big girl shop back. And nice. If I was really an artist, I would add the uh, stripes, but I'm not. Good enough. Plus, I'm about to put some uh, my weather text back in. That's all, folks.